Hey everybody, oh my god, it's been like, it seems like forever, and um, every day I keep saying, I gotta do a video, because I have like so many ideas going through my head, and um, there just hasn't been time, even for five or ten minutes, it's, it's been unbelievable, and so I find myself sitting here saying, ah, what do I want to tell you guys, right, because there's so many little nuggets of the day. Um, and the, the way the last few weeks have gone. One thing I was going to share when I was like, like high on excitement is I know that a long, a while ago, one of the earlier videos, I think about <clears throat> the neuroemotional threshold, I think it was that one. I talked about my experience in the band and how I decided to stay with the band and do my thing. But we had the concert and I actually had like the best season that I've had ever. I played with joy. I, my belonging issues uh, was so minimal, if at all, and it was just fun. And, and I wanted to share that because we can change the story of our life, right? We can, uh, as I like to tell my niece, r you know, write a new script for ourselves. Um, we don't have to get stuck in the, what defines us, what, what holds us back. We have the opportunity to to back up a little bit, take a look at what's going on, be curious about what's going on within us, and we get to change the course. And I hope that you guys can get that. And there's so many ways of working with that. So please, you know, if you feel like you, you want that help, reach out. You know, for those who have been to me, check in, give me a call. Go over a tool that I gave you that you need refreshing on. If those don't know me, come know me, <laughs> come meet me. Um, so, so that anyway, I wanted to share that. The other thing I wanted to share is I often use, when, when I talk about the tools and what we need to be, to, to live and, and find the path of peace versus the path of struggle, I often use this analogy of a, a fire extinguisher. You know, that we, we need these tools when we need them in times of distress, in times of struggle, in times of trauma, emergency, whatever's going on. And oftentimes we don't know where we put that card. Where's that card, DJ? What, what did DJ say? What, what am I supposed to do? We practice in times of calm, so we have the tool when we need it. And I often use the example of a fire extinguisher, because if you go by the fire extinguisher and you never look at it and you put it away somewhere, that when you need it, you don't, A, where is it? Is it even charged? And holy shit how do I even use it, right? Like, and so, and I've said this, I've used this example over and over and over again. And lo and behold, I had an opportunity really in my life to, to actually use the fire extinguisher. And fortunately, I knew where it was. Guess what? I'm not sure if it's charged. I'm not sure. I think it had a little charge. I'm not sure. And I'm, there I am with this fire I had a grill fire on my patio, on my porch, which is right next to my house. And in my panic, I was like, <gasps> "What do I do? What do I do? I do shut the gas, shut the gas, get the fire extinguisher, save." I actually saved the food because uh, that was important to me. Um, but uh, here I am, like, like holy cow! Like looking at, reading, like pull, pull the pin. <gasps> what pin? Where's the pin? What's what? Is that is that the red thing? And you know, years ago when I was like 11, I was getting the little hibachi. Uh, grill ready for the family. We were going to have dinner. And I poured too much charcoal lighter on and it created a fire and it started going on the grass and it started heading towards these trees and this neighbor ran over and helped me. And, and I still remember that. That was like a, a little traumatic experience. Not huge, but enough to get me going. And so while I was so aware that while that panic was there and oh my god, oh my god, oh my god, this other part of me which I credit to all the practice of mindfulness, of staying in the present moment, of working my tools, that while that path of panic was going on, this other path of peace was going on. Shut the gas, save the food, get the fire extinguisher. I had uh, pulled the red thing, I think that was the pen, and I stood ready. I didn't have to use it, fortunately, thank God. It, it gradually burned out. It took a while, but it gradually burned out. So I just thought it was interesting that I would use this as an example all the time. And here I am, like in live time, like, oh my God, let me read the directions. So I wanted to share that. So many things I wanted to, I want to share that I can't even go into them all. I, I don't think I could even sort them out fully. 
I will share with you my most recent experience to, today as I was driving out to a doctor's appointment. Um, fortunately, a healthy doctor's appointment. You know, I just was reflecting on things, on life, and what is going on around us, right, in terms of how, we, how people are living, how people are eating. Um, like, I know this might sound like, like ridiculous, but it's so hard to find like wild caught fish these days. Everything's farm raised, and I won't buy farm raised. I mean, I probably have, not knowing, or when I go to a restaurant. Um, and I, I just started feeling sad that so many people are, were getting to, most people are living in this place of unconsciousness, a place of, of habit, the hardwiring of the brain. They're so um, influenced by what society tells them around, the, the expectations. Um, what we just watch people drive, watch people eat, watch people shop. This frenzy of trying to fill a void or trying to fill themselves, and I don't know. It just made, I just felt sad. I was driving out to my doctor's appointment. I could I could just feel the sadness, this heaviness. I was like, Ugh. it was like this big by the time I got there. Because how do we shift that? You know, I shift that. I work very hard uh, to shift that within myself. Um, yeah, you know, I have a con I'm working on this condition in my arm, as you can see, I have this tape on me, or maybe you can't, but I do. What do I need to do to keep myself healthy? As soon as my blood pressure went, goes up, I immediately look at what I'm eating. As soon as the swelling goes up in my arm, I pay attention to what I'm eating. What can I do differently? How are you guys taking responsibility for your health? Physical, emotional, spiritual, financial, so on and so forth. You know, I always say to my clients, like, what are you doing between the sessions, right? Because it's not just about going somewhere and having something done to you. It's all these hopefully conscious choices you can make about yourself every day that say, am I moving in the direction I want to go? Because struggle is very much an incongruency between the way you're living and the way you want to live. And some people don't even know they're in struggle, because a lot of people are unconscious. If we can get you to a level of awareness, you might realize, holy shit, there is struggle in my life. You know, I want to live at peace, yet I'm trying to control things that aren't mine. I'm trying to take on stuff that's not mine. I'm just eating whatever, not paying attention to who, what, where. I'm not taking tr control of my own physical health. So much. I didn't, so I, I don't even know where I want to go, except I want, I want for everybody to kind of wake up to say, how are you taking care of yourself? Are you exercising? How are you relationally? Are you as concerned about what you're putting in your mouth as what you're putting in your car, right? Or what you're putting in your dog? Many people, I know many, many, many people who are so concerned about what they feed their dog, which I think is great. Let me, don't get me wrong, that's wonderful. I want the best for my dog, trust me, he's a little coochie coochie, I love him. Um, but what about what you're putting in yourself, right? How can you impact your health by, pay, by, by shifting what you eat, right? To paying attention to inflammation, paying attention to foods that they're so absolutely yummy scrummy, I want more and more, that are just totally delicious foods, but then the more you consume, the more depressed you get, or the more brain fog you get, right? So all this to say is that we have the opportunity, excuse me, I got an eye itch, uh, to, to change the course of our life by looking at our emotional health, our psychological health, our physical health. But you gotta be willing to do the work, you know? I have, and I think I've showed you guys before, I have the magic wand. I've tried it many times. I can't get people better with it. If I could, I would do nothing but get people better. I'd love to get you better in one visit, right? I'd love to get you better forever. It is the art of subtle change, that we can make a small change now and a small change in the, the next now and the next now and the next now and just arrive at a really sweet spot. And that's what, that's all I want. That's all I want for all my clients, whether they're on my table or on 
my couch or in this chair. All I want is for you guys to find the sweet spot of life because when you do, it's sweet. So anyway, all that, I got so much more, but gotta go, gotta go, I got somebody waiting. Take good care of yourselves, pay attention, share the videos, make a difference in your own life, okay? Nothing but peace to you, bye-bye.